one. Hello, welcome to this another series in Alchem Plant Live. I'm happy you could have joined us. I'm also hoping that you would have been engaging in monitoring and ensuring that your families and friends are safe by sticking to the COVID-19 protocols. Thank you for joining us and do also remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our pages. Also, we have our usual program on Wednesday morning on Power 106 FM. And so we ask too that you tune in and join in the program. Today is a very special day. We'll have two excellent guests with us joining in the program later on. Moreover, we'll be talking about our formulated products. You might ask, what are those? Do you remember that we have our formulating plant, which is at Hillrun, and what we do is to look at what we the market demands and, of course, formulate accordingly. So today's program will cover the products that we do formulate. We'll have, of course, an excellent interview with Dr. Dalip, who is our product development manager. And, of course, you'll hear about our herbicide and insecticide line. And, of course, to top it all off, our quality assurance coordinator will also be presenting. So, at Atkem Plant, we pride ourselves in using excellent raw materials. These raw materials, of course, are from very good sources. And because of this, we have several checks and balances throughout the system. Now, you'll hear more about that as we continue in our program. Now, I'm hoping you didn't think I've forgotten about you. Farmers, happy Farmers Month. I'm hoping that you are making good use of the activities and of course you are keeping the productivity levels up as we strive to increase our productivity levels and of course ensure that we are food secure now here at Alchem we have ups. we are celebrating you through April through to May so April 14th through May 14th where we'll have a farmers month special now we have various farm stores that will be offering 7 to 10% discount on our, our wide category of products that we carry. So once you go into that store and you're purchasing, remember, ask about the special discount package. And of course, feel free to bask in all of that that is being offered. So we have products from different lines, you know, whether it be Miller or Omex, whether it be Jacked Up or our spray canisters or wherever it is. We also have special stores that are participating in the program itself. And so we anticipate that you will take up the offers as we continue to celebrate you in this month. Now, the different brands, as I'd mentioned, are as follows, where we have our BSF portfolio, which includes Bellis, Acrobat, Zampro, um, you name it. We have our Jacto line, both are manual sprayer and we also have a battery operated one we are from the agafert line both our agasol which is a soluble and our agar leaf line and of course miller and omex don't forget the good green stem and of course our manufactured products do remember that as you go into these stores you just simply ask for your discount package should the store clerk or the cashier don't remember just remind them that you are requesting as such and of course, two lucky persons, one male, one female, this afternoon will walk away with a very special prize, courtesy of Alchem Plant Life. So joining me today in the program is our product development manager. She encompasses many duties. But I would want to tell you, I would want for you to listen to her and hear what she does behind the scenes here at Alchem Plant. At this time, I'd like to introduce you to the Product Development Manager, Dr. Kathy Dye. Welcome to the show, Dr. Thank you, Dean. Thanks for having me. Excellent. Um, the role of the Product Development Manager, it sounds large. What exactly do you do? All right. So one of the things that the Product Development Manager is responsible for is for the life cycle of the products in our portfolio to ensure that they do become obsolete before time, before we, before we have to actually take them off of the shelf. And then another one is to identify alternatives to what we have in our products because we want to keep current. We want to be ensuring that we answer our farmers' 
needs and what their challenges are, you know. So that is another one. Um, we also have to validate the claims of the manufacturers of these of these products. Um, if you're bringing in any new products, and also of our own locally formulated products, and we also the product development manager also has to be like a chief liaison between our principals and us here at Kenya you know, to have the conversation and continue to grow. One of the important ones, um, which I mustn't forget, is to ensure that we. Uh, comply with our regulatory bodies because that's a very important yes, part of us to be continuous to operate. So, there you have it already. The role is quite dynamic to, to interface, to, to liaise, to do all that there is. So, in bringing an, an item to market, a product, say an herbicide, an insecticide, what's the matrix? I mean, don't disclose all the secrets. Now, <laughs> what's the matrix? How do you go about doing that? All right. So one of the things, the first thing that we have to do is identify where there's a need. Yes. You know, whether it is that a farm, the farmers require, you know, they have some challenge with possibly a new and emerging pest. Okay. Or if it is that um, there's some new product on your chemistry in the market that is more environmentally friendly because that's the way that you know we're going yes. at Akem mm -hmm. and I think internationally to become more environmentally friendly with our products. Mm -hmm. And so once we identify a product that is um, that fits those criteria, yes. then we have to go out and validate the claims of the manufacturer to ensure that. It performs as it's expected to. And our local conditions, because you know we have different climate, microclimatic and environmental conditions throughout Jamaica. So you are one of our agronomists in one of the regions, and you know that in your region conditions may vary from another in um, maybe in the south. West or northeast. So know. pretty much you wouldn't want to just bring in something to market and then say, Oh yeah, here is product mix, it works. Let, let, let's try to sell it. Right. There's a lot of validation that has to take validation. place. And then we have to say we also have to look at um comparing it with what is in our portfolio. If it is that we're improving on one of our own formulations. Yes. You know, so we compare it to what we already have and what we can do to improve it. So is this a version, better version, version two or something that we have, and also what's available locally. So those are the things that we look at um, in bringing a product to market. Okay, excellent. Now, finally, for, for, for our viewers, for persons, for young persons who are possibly watching, um, what are some of the skill sets, you know, that is required to be brought to this job function? I mean, perhaps somebody is in university watching, okay. you know, Thinking, oh, I could be a product development manager. Sure. What are some of the soft skills that you know? Okay. Are, yes. So some of the hardest skills would be, of course, to have technical knowledge. Mm -hmm. You know, so to be able to be to to read and interpret and understand the technical information that yes. we get from our manufacturers, analysis. right? Yes. Analysis that you do locally and all of that sort of thing. But also to be able to select a team of capable agronomists. Yes. Who will be able to go out in the field and be able to conduct the evaluations that are required and, pro and, and, and collect the information, the data that makes sense to us and to inform us on whether or not we can go forward the product or not. So, so our, as well as the agronomists have to be able to um, be able to communicate with our farmers as well as you know on a certain level as well as some of our democrats you know so they they, they have you have to be able to select competent agronomists like yourself and and the rest of the of the product development team and some of the softer skills would be um be able to manage personalities you know um another skill i would say which is important in product development is report writing because you have to be able to put the information in a format that will be able to be that the plant manager will be able to interpret and our sales manager will be able to interpret to see whether or not this product we go with it that when you can assess it and say yes we can go with this information um 
time management. Oh, yes. That's a software skill that we all know that we can also always improve on. And uh, one of the other things we do also in terms of dealing with regulatory bodies, both locally and across the region, um, being having, a, having an understanding of agriculture in Jamaica and in the wider Caribbean, because remember that we have sister companies across the region, you know, so that's another one. And also to understand some of the major pests that yes. affect our crops and the relationships with the, the plant pests relationship and how um, the economic importance, how they affect the farmers um, bottom line. Wow. So, so there you have it. It's, a, it's, a, it's quite encompassing. It's, it's, it's being able to be environmentally conscious on one hand and at the same time managing people, being able to analyze the information, data, you name it, and then to, of course, bring that to the general public and to everyone to say, you know, this is who we are. So when we actually see a product on the market, there is a, a weeks and months of work, years of data going in, into that, into just doing that. Wow, excellent. You see, it's part of the conversation in terms of you farmers understanding when you see our chemistries on the market, you know, the quality of work that goes beyond, behind the scenes to get this product on the shelf and also we are able to validate to say, yes, it works. So when we speak, we speak with authority, we speak with the, with the competence and the skill set to say, indeed. Thank you for joining me today, Dr. Allen. It was quite an interesting, eye-opening conversation. Join us once more. Again, um, we let you know. So we keep the conversation going. Of course, indeed. And thanks for having me. Of course, indeed. So. So farmers, we are dynamic here at Chem Plant. Now, we'll speak to our herbicide, of course, being of several types, whether it be selective or non-selective, whether they are contact or such like. But we do manufacture these locally. And what we do is to strategize, as you would have heard from Dr. Dalton, to look at ways in which we can control these weeds effectively and at the same time be soft mm -hmm. on the environment. As such, we put, of course, that they are rain fast, you get quick knockdown, and of course, they are wetting agents, you know, what they call surfactants that goes into these products to help them to be absorbed into the plant species to, of course, provide the kind of knockdowns that you want to obtain. And then, you know, firstly, on this list is our glyphos AG41, which, of course, has a 41% um, glyphosate that is in it. It's broad spectrum, systemic, and it covers a wide range of um, tree, uh, herbs, or weeds that, of course, are controlled in this. And it can be used, of course, through your different crops, such as your citrus, your banana, your coffee, papaya, and, you know, various orchard crops, you know, so as to be effective in control. It be, um, again, as a matter of safety, we talk about your re-entry period, and, of course, you want to maintain these. This is, of course... Um, 12 hours. The other glyphosate option that we have is Glyphos Max. Now, this is an excellent product. It's actually 48% active ingredient and not 41 as you're seeing, but it's broad spectrum and of course systemic. It's an excellent product in terms of controlling various types of grasses and so on. So very, very good product. Excellent in terms of the surfactant nature. And of course it becomes rain, it has rain fast properties. So once you would have applied it, and should you have rain in less than, say, 12 hours, the plant is able to pick up and utilize, and, of course, you get the knockdown as is needed. Now, in the contact side of the situation, we have Parquat Super. Again, this is a Parquat dichloride product, which is broad-spectrum contact. So once you spray it, and it comes in contact with the weeds, you get that knockdown that you need so far. So these are what we consider sometimes to be our legacy products. They are always being manufactured, and you'll see them on the various shelves at your farm stores. Now, we added also to that list a product called Scorcher. Now, I won't tell you how my colleagues framed the, 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 the response to this, but an excellent um, paraquat dichloride. But what is so special about this is it's a thicker blend of the paraquat dichloride with, of course, a unique surfactant. And what this really does is that you get faster knockdown. One farmer... Unfortunately, I say unfortunate because he called it liquid machete. 
So you must know how fast it worked and quickly it worked. We were able to spray like in about 8 o'clock and we were saying to him, let's wait for the, the PR to cut and him saying, man, given the efficacy, what we've seen, let's just move in to chop down the whole place. You know, we had to sort of restrain him and say, no, man, let, let's let the product work and get into the plant tissue. So it's a thicker blend. The unique um, action in terms of it being translaminar, so it's taken up by the plant faster and you get an excellent control. Now, based on these two particular characteristics, also, you get a wider kill. So weeds that are a little bit tougher or harder to kill, you get that knocked down with our scorcher blend that is there. Um, for some of our farmers who do like your pastures and so on and your turfs, we have 2,4-D that can be used to get out your broadleaf weeds so as to be in a position. So farmers who do like your sugar cane or your other crops, you can, your pastures, your corn, this is also a product that can be used. So it's considered to be selective, meaning kills broad leaves only, and it is also systemic. So it goes into the plant system and kills from the root all the way up. Uh, we generally recommend that you, of course, given the area that we recommend it for it to be used in, you know, watch out for your fruit trees and other plants that are around because once it drifts or comes in contact, then the plant will be knocked out. Now, our other blend which is formulated locally is our glufosinate ammonium, or what we call Carista. Now, Carista is contact, but what it gives you is an excellent control, especially for our pepper and our cabbage and our you know, broccoli or cauliflower farmers. Now, you can go through the intervals or between the plants. Now, it's a contact, so let me just point out some things here now. It's contact. So the recommendation is that you go through or between the crop rows, as you are going to be seeing now in this particular um, demonstration that was done. So what we did, we recognized that this pepper field had several weed species, whether it be grasses or broad leaves, such as broom weeds. We had some um, whiteheads inside of it. And I am excited about the whitehead because I know farmers who have whiteheads. And might tell you, them cry day and night, but Carista is here to the rescue. Now, this product, of course, of course, it's contact, but it behaves like a systemic. Meaning, what you'll see is you're not going to see that scorching as how scorcher or park what will do it. When you apply today, you start see what is called the yellowing or the phytotoxicity occurring. And the entire plant itself yellows right down. Now, it's a, I don't know if you have a word called semi-systemic, but... That's how it sort of behaves. So what you really get is that you get that nice yellowing down right to the root and the plant is actually burnt in its entirety. Now, if you notice in this pepper field, let me bring back your attention to it, that the treated area, we just go through the passages and around the plants. So we recommend also for crops like these, your circle weed. You go around them, weed around it, so that if the farm hand or yourself doing it, you don't have a situation where the drift can scorch the plant or burn the plant. So we went through the entire row and we just sprayed the intervals. And what happens here and now is that the weed species will be burned right to the ground. Now, should you not be able to maintain, you know, your, 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 your hand speed and your movement, here at Alchem Plant, we have a spray shield just, just, just in time for farmers going to the special too. So you can get your, your spray shield, put it on your spray, your, spray, your spray pan. Of course, if you want to get a brand new jack to, to battery operated, no problem with that. And you go through the passage. Believe me, it speeds up the entire operation. So you look out for that. And of course, we have a video that was done on YouTube. So you can go back, see how the jack to operated spray pan works. So you can make your decision accordingly. Another example, as I mentioned to you earlier, this is a farmer that did um, broccoli and cauliflower. And so what we did, we just sprayed through the entire passage. Normally, this would take at least a Monday or two Mondays to effectively weed. What we're able to do is to say to the farmer, move on and do something else. Because within five or ten minutes or even half an hour, you can spray through the intervals. As long as your crop is lined up, and in rows, you can just burn through the entire area. Again, the caution is that you want to prevent any drifting from occurring, or this might cause some amount of burning of the plant, but it will not necessarily 
kill the plant. So you bear that in mind as you as you um, utilize that. Now, I did say to you we had two special guests today. And as a result of that, our quality control coordinator, I hope I get the job title right, is here with us today in the form of Mr. Omar Forrester. And pretty much as the name suggests, that's what he does. Quality control. Welcome to the program, Omar. That's how I'm in the Yeah, man, good. So your job function is quality control. You, you are working behind the scenes, man. Yes. It's a long time I don't even see you. Can you imagine, man? So, so what's the function? What's the importance of what you do? Well, um, main function is basically to oversee the, all the quality processes, mm -hmm. uh, which is embedded in our quality management system. Okay. And uh, you may ask the question, what is quality management system? Yes, man, bring it What on. is the purpose mm -hmm. of the quality management system? Sure, explain. So the purpose is basically to ensure customer satisfaction okay. and to ensure continual improvement of our products. Because in every business, right, customers, cost the customer satisfaction is vital. Right? Okay. So okay. it's of utmost importance. And in other words, right, if you, you can say it's basically important for the longevity of the business. Yes, so it is. Because so. if you get up tomorrow, um, so for example, you start a bank loose business, mm -hmm. and you know, the first 10 watches are the same number. Right, the quality is excellent. Yes. The following batches, for instance, say for example, you, you, you do one of five batches following that, the quality, the quality is poor. Then you will definitely see a reduction the yes, in, the, in the number of sales or number of customers. So that then brings me to the most important question of this thing. How then do you ensure that these things, the, the products that we put out, our formulated blends, are what we brag about? How do you know that? Well, it's very, very, very hard you know. Technically? Um, yes, ma'am. Yes. Wow. Um, all right. So what we do is so we establish critical control points. Because in every manufacturing process, you have an input mm -hmm. for the processes yes. and you have the output. Okay. So the input to ensure that the raw materials are checked. So this is a routine check. This is, this is a routine. Can yeah, go around this process. Can yeah, go around this process. Okay. So this is going right through to the end. The whole book is a finished product. Okay. Right? So this ensures that the consistency yes. of the product is always good. All right? So, so these critical control points are monitored by you and your team. Yes. So, yes, right. so, so nothing is missed in those steps that go along, so to speak. Nothing is missed. And of right. course, the documentation and all these things are maintained. Which is embedded in our quality management system. Okay, I see, I see. So, so you see, farmers, when we put out a carista and tell you it worked, there's no questioning whether or not because Sir Forrester here is ensuring that whatever the critical control critical points, control points the name suggests and tells you the critical control points are maintained along the way. So it's a quality management process. Are you using your words in a yes, careful yes, yes, yes. So this process in terms of the CCPs are shortening it. Yes. Ho, 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 ho. How do you go about doing it then? Just give me a sneak peek. So, say, for example, you, you mentioned the bathrooms, but we don't know about rooms. We don't know how to Yes, yes. So, um, help me to understand now. You're doing some diazin on them. Yes. You're manufacturing some diazin on Critical control points. Right. Some basic ones. So, the input, right? Yeah. So the input, basically, the raw materials. Raw materials. Right? So, ensure that these raw materials are checked according to our specifications. Mm -hmm. If they do not meet the specifications, then we reject it. Who check it? Yeah. Who are you having external The entire team. The entire team. Okay. 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 So once the quality is, is what it is, then you move to the next step. Move to the next stage. Okay. Right? If it's not good, then we reject it and send it back to the So it's, it's, it's another all over again. We can't manufacture any, any, any. There's another thing because yeah. the raw material is good, so we can't go any further. Have good quality, why, why, why manufacture it? There you go. So, yeah. farmers, it won't even get to your level before you can say, Oh, this thing not working because the, 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 the team at the plant monitors, checks to make sure that what it is, it, it raw materials is it fits the rubric 
and he cannot go beyond that point. Wow, excellent. So even from a say, for example, then you make the product and it gets to the shelf and the cap not working or the seal break. How, how, you have a recall process or what's the procedure there? How does one so, get? Mm -hmm. So what is done? So a, a customer complaint form. Okay. Like this field out and it send, customer send it to our, our respective um, personnel mm -hmm. and they will they would forward it to me. Right? Okay. So once I get this customer complaint form, mm -hmm. we immediately immediate, immediately launch an investigation. Into okay. The matter, right. If we see where the if we see where the product basically are the caps or basically at fault, mm -hmm. then we immediately replace our complaint to the customer. Okay. Yes. Excellent. So mm -hmm. you see, farmers, <laughs> it doesn't okay, it doesn't matter from which level. The systems are so built in that you can, if you have an issue, you can get redress in the form of the, the information. We are information driven. So the, the, the representative, myself, and the other agronomists in the field, or the technical sales agronomists, or even the front desk receptionist, or whomever, the, the form is filled out and that is sent now right through the system. Omar gets it, and then you start to do your checks and balances. Yes. So let's say if it's not working, we do a field test or we do a lab test mm -hmm. or something of the sort. So yeah. either way, the farmer is benefiting. Yes. And then, yes, of course, right. right. Agchem plant and, and our reputation as an entity is also maintained. Yes, that's Excellent right. job you're, you're doing. Young. Excellent job, Omar. Excellent job. Continue to do that good work. So I asked Dr. Lepa a, a, a question, and I want to ask you the same thing. Uh, I don't know if anybody wants to replace you, but... I mean, yeah. let's do the interview from now. <laughs> Tell them how you get the job. Uh, what, what are some of these prerequisite skills that, that the, the QC needs to have? Well, um, first of all, you need to have a very strong background in chemistry. Okay. Right? Because all the, right. the products are chemical based. All right. right. So, yes, yes. Um, you need to have a very strong, strong background in chemistry, especially analytical chemistry. Okay. Right. Because right. with the analytical chemistry, it helps you to do all the testing and okay. ensure that everything is within specification. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. yes. So, so mm -hmm. after that, I mean that. Is your is your job excited? I mean, it's yes, chemically man. working with you yes, in the lab every day. I mean, talking about. Hey, um, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You see, when you get to put all that knowledge to use at your learning school, wow, it's an exquisite feeling. Wow, yes, feeling Excellent. of blissfulness. So, and, yes. and and not just that. I suppose when you see the product on shelf, you're like, yeah, I'm gonna do that, you know. Yeah, so, man, I'll do that. Yes, yes, that's you, true. You can't give yourself a little, you know. That's true. Thank you, mm -hmm. Omar, for passing through. Um, keep up the good work and you know we're raising the banner for our farmers to grow their yields we're raising the banner for them to continue to produce excellent crops you know mm -hmm. thank you for joining us today thank you for having me excellent yes. there you go so there you have it farmers Omar Forrester our quality control coordinator who does all this excellent work in maintaining the, the, the balance of the products that we bring to market. And so now we move to the formulated insecticides that we do here at Alchem Plant. And of course, one of the key things Dr. Dyke would have mentioned it, um, I'm sure that's on the top of the mind of Omar as well. We're maintaining the balance of our ecosystems. We, we, don't want, we want to control the pests, but if beneficials are present, we, 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 can't, we can't kill them too. And so we take these things into, into mind as we formulate, you know, the beetles that are feeding on the aphid or the parasitoid that is there in the natural environment. We ensure that we maintain these systems so as to have what we call ecological balance, you know, life must continue. And so the tropical insect powder is one such product that we ensure that, you know, it brings to the level of control you know, in terms of your ants, your cutworms, your leaf hopper, you know, even in poultry it can be used or, you know, so it's a diverse product, you know, used by householders, used on farm, you know, it's dusted and used to control these various insects. You know, this is one of the, the flagship products, you know, Dazenon. I'm sure your great, great grandfather can tell you about this one, you know, it's been on the market for some time now, but it does the job very well so farmers we have those that are 
you know, hard hitting and we can also move to the softer side in terms of the different chemistries. So it's contact, it's broad spectrum, and it controls a wide range of insects, you know, whether it be aphids, the soft body types, thrips, or worms, or even different scale insects that are very much there. So it also balances out in terms of its ornamental or orchard uses, or whether you want to use it on the different vegetables. You know, my classic situation is my farmers in their sweet potato belt using it to control the, the potato weevil. And of course, whether you have grubs in the field, you know, this product also can be utilized. You know, naturally, the, the, my farmers run it through their drip irrigation system to control the different insect pests that are present there. Now, we also have a definite that is used, and it's a delta metrin, it's a contact product used on our sucking insects, you know, sometimes mites, depending on the population levels, your army worms, as well as your caterpillars. You know, again, in your vegetable crops and in your fruit crops, it can be utilized. You know, products like definite, you know, can be used even on your lettuce. You know, you have, you're, you're, you're having a few lettuce aphids or some amount of wildfire control and um, aphids in, in sweet peppers, it can be used. Another product is Malathion, which is a 50% EC product that is broad spectrum as well, similar to Diazinon and covers a wide range of insect pests um, that you might have in the field. Here, an example of how we used it to control budworms in cassava. So from time to time, you have these larger crops. The, the requirement in terms of input is not great, but the budworm can significantly reduce the foliage and cause... Um, you know, the plants will come under stress and everything. So malathion can be used here. And it's a relatively simple application that can be used in the cassava. And it gives you excellent, excellent control. And of course, how can we leave out our coffee farmers with coffee berry borer? Soldan is on the, their lips and saying, hey, we've used this product before. So it's a contact product. But when we introduce this, of course, I'm sure it would have brought down the levels of issues where the berry borer was concerned and of course we have other softer chemistries too that can be used but in the case of soldan it's an excellent product that is used in coffee now i mentioned and i would have alluded to on many occasions on the softer side and so that's how mimic was brought into play the product controls both your beet armyworms your cabbage looper um you name the caterpillar your armyworms it can control it now, what it really does is that it's what you call an insect growth regulator. What that really means is that it prevents them from going through the various stages of metamorphosis. I'm sure you know, if your grandmother ever tells you, say, yeah, be have like four times mango, I finger right banana. But what that really means is that you're getting ahead of yourself. So in this instant, they, we, we signal to the worm or to, to molt or to force molt. And so what it tries to do is to mold, and in so doing, it literally exposes itself to the harsh environment, which is sunlight, and it usually just happens to die. So you would have seen, and, and um, you would have seen in our calendar some time to time, where this picture that is on screen would have been shown, where we tested it in the control of beet and worms, and we got excellent reviews from this product. So we use it on the skeleton in the earlier stages where the we are just coming out of what we know as they call the first instar. And so the control is effective on the population side. So in the area that is bald or, or blank, so to speak, the insect pest would have been controlled in that point. And in the area where they see the skeleton still growing, the mimic would have been used to treat that area. And of course, his farmer was pretty much upset asking me why I never spray the whole field. But when we bring to market, you know, what from what Omar would have mentioned and Dr. Dalit, what we do is to test and retest so as to validate the chemistries. And so we would have been bringing it to market, and this is just one phase of saying, let's put it into the test in the height of the beet armyworm um, and see how best it can be used to control it. And of course, from the results, it does work. Even the diamond buck moth on your cabbage it gives good control, but what you must do now is to step in early. The earlier you come in, the better it is in terms of the control. 
because again, it's an insect growth regulator. It's a softer side of chemistry, but it's very effective in the control of your Lepidopteran species. Another soft chemistry here is REFAS, which is a potassium oleate. Um, it's both, it, it's, it's pretty much on the side where it could be considered a mighty side, an insecticide, and a fungicide in one. Because of the nature of how this product works, it controls a wide range of insect and pest conditions. Now, the aphids, your leaf miners, your lacewing bugs, even your leaf hoppers can be controlled using this product. So if you're, say, for example, harvesting and you're doing harvesting over an extended period, then you introduce reefers so as to ensure that you have the knockdown and the control you need, but the pre-harvest intervals are maintained throughout the cycle. Um, it's usually a three-day product, so you can harvest within three days of application, but it provides you with excellent um, coverage. It also acts and can help you with like your powdery mildew based on the active ingredient, it can provide you with control for your powder mildew. So hence the reason we say it's both a fungicide, an insecticide, and a miticide because of the nature of how this chemistry works. Of course, we have our plant guard that is used and formulated here at Hillrun. And what it also do is it controls a range of snails and slugs and some people go to the farm, so they ask for the slug liquid. This is the product to be used. It can be, I've seen farmers use it in bait setups, or you can put it in a knapsack sprayer and just spray it through the entire area. So it's versatile like that. The bottle requires some amount of agitation because you must tell the height, the active ingredient does settle. So you, of course, you know, get a little bit of muscle build up, you know, so shake it up a bit, you know, exercise a bit and get it applied accordingly. And of course, the application is diverse in terms of your fruit trees, your ornamentals, your vegetables, your nurseries, even your lawns. You might have snails crawling through to go on your nice lush um, begonias or you name it. You can use it around the periphery to keep the population down or wherever you find snails. Um, lastly on our list is our adjuvant, our spreader sticker. This product, of course, as the name suggests, it's a surfactant, so it allows a better wetting or a better contact. So whatever chemistry you're putting, you add your spreader sticker to it, and what you get is better bonding to the surface of the plant. So if it's a herbicide, it can be added. If it's an insecticide, you can still add it to it because it is diverse and versatile like that. Even if you're using a fungicide, what you do when you apply it, you get better coverage to the leaf surface. So it makes the water wetter. I see you smiling. Well, that's what it does, really. It gives you that, it breaks the surface tension, then. You get the scientific on you know. It breaks the surface tension, so when you apply the water with the chemistry, you get better bonding and better coverage over the surface here. In terms of your herbicides, even better control, just the same. So here and now, we are coming almost to the close of our program. And of course, a critical question is asked, and I think I should ask me this question. Why choose ag chem products? I mean, why would you want to do that? And I pull from both Dr. Dollips and Omar's responses. We are looking at our local conditions and we are, we are studying the market to see what are the challenges our farmers are having? Can we make our products better to better serve you? Also, we put wetting agents and you know, surfactant in it so you get better control or better range of control or even longer term control. We do that in our glyphos max and in our scorcher so as to be in a position to better serve you, our farmers. And of course, we have continuous feedback and improvements. This, of course, the product development department and Omar's department is continuously doing. And why so? We're getting the feedback. We want to implement and we want to use this information we're gathering to better serve our farmers and their growing needs. And lastly, the mechanism that we have in place in terms of testing and demonstrations to our farmers. We are in the field 
standing behind our products to say, listen, this product works and I'm here to show you and to represent it to the fullest extent. And so we can say for certainty when we pick up a bottle of Glyphos Max and say, hey, this works because we have not just the longevity of the experience with it, but we know the process that it has gone under to bring to market. And of course, lastly, the quality, quality control mechanisms Omar spoke of. All of these are there to ensure that long before you get it on the shelf or you go and buy it from a farm store, that product goes through a series of testing that of course is rigorous and can stand up to any scrutiny right across the world. And so with that bit, I ask of you to continue to maintain the COVID-19 protocols and be safe. Are there any questions at this time from our farmers that are viewing? There's just one question that I'm seeing. Sure. Some persons want you to save the live for them. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell them where they can access the live. Okay, excellent. Now farmers, we have our YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram pages that you can, of course, go to. And once you go on YouTube, you type in Ag Chem Plant, it will pop up. Once you go on Instagram, the same thing. Once you go on Facebook, the same. Ag Chem Plant. A-G-C-H-E-M-P-L-A-N-T. And what you'll see is a host of resources in terms of the lives that we've done. Um, all the different topics that we've covered thus far, whether that be crop specific or even today's session, it's very much there in the archive. And should you have further questions, of course, 757-0022. You can reach out to us. We have agronomists in the field right across the length and breadth of this country. Um, we have Dennis Lecky in the in St. Mary, in Portland and in St. Anne. We have John R. Johnson in St. Catherine and in St. Andrew and in St. Thomas. Yours truly, Dane Parker in Clarendon and Manchester. And we also have Dale Smith in Hanover, St. James and Trelawney. And Sion Spence in Westmoreland and St. Elizabeth. So should you find the need to have more input or more knowledge on the different products and services that we offer, you can reach out to any one of them. Also, I must say to you farmers, we have our annually published calendar, an excellent document covers months of data and field trials and all the rest of it. You can, of course, scan it through and feel free to reach out to any one of us. Are there any other questions? Michelle on Instagram was asking, what do you use for slugs? Do we have anything for slugs? Oh, sure. We have our plant guard, our slug liquid that is very much effective. Um, it comes in a 500 ml bottle, a half liter, that you can purchase to apply in and around. Again, farmers, while you use, just a safety note, while you use the various forms of pesticides, I encourage you, you get a pair of gloves and a respirator. You know, we have face shields now too. Even though they are small and plastic, still put on one. And we also have respirators that should be used. You don't want to cause any spillage. And if you do, ensure that you are protected accordingly. Are there any other questions? So I remind you again of our Farmers Month special. We have selected stores. Feel free to stop by, inquire, and of course, make your purchase. Um, we, uh, as to the question I was asked initially, you have the resource online so you can go back and watch them over and over and you can of course put these strategies in place so for next week tuesday that is coming up and that's the 27th of april at 1 p.m john R. johnson will be your host at that time where we're looking at strengthening the plants vitality you know against 
various virus or viruses as you would have it. So John, I will be speaking on that. I know for farmers who have their, it's coming into the dry period now. So you find that sometimes your tomatoes tend to what they call jerry curl and your peppers too can show a little bit of viral symptoms. Join John I on Tuesday at 1 p.m. where he will speak on the different strategies we have in place. And of course, I'm sure you'll see field work from those activities to showcase how best to control these viruses. And of course, I did mention today that we have a gift i wonder who has an interest georgia who was the first person who had joined us today first person was shanzi underscore seven one seven eight okay so shanzi i i hear you are the first person to have joined and so i want to celebrate you this afternoon sir for having joined the program and having participated are you still there? Send me a thumbs up now, Sandy. I'm gone. Are you there, Sandy? And of course, I want you to send your contact information so we can reach out to you where so you can get your gift. So is he, is he there? He's, he's listening but not paying attention. Oh, you'll message him because I was going to say to Sandy, mind you know, gift coming your way and you're not paying attention. All right. So. The question I'd like to pose this afternoon, so Shanzi get the, 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 the free gift, but the question I'd like to pose this afternoon is this. Identify one of our paraquat dichloride option that is suitable as a contact herbicide to spray down your various grasses and weeds in your farm plot. So identify one of the paraquat dichloride option. If I, do, if I use another term, you might very well get it. So one of the paraquat dichloride options that are suitable as a contact. So George, the first person who would have responded now um, would be that person to What is it that is responding? So it's a paraquat dichloride option, yes? You know? Yes, Carlton Richards. Carlton Richards. Wells. Is, no. he, is he providing no. that? Carlton Richards is not the. You said, what was the question? Paraquat dichloride? Yes. We, we oh, so the Carl Bent is the winner. Scorcher. Oh, so Mr. Bent. Yes. Yes, man. So Carl Bent would have been the person to walk away with this afternoon's gift item. Please ask him to send his contact. Yeah, man. So share your contact, Sir Bent. Um, so, of course, the answer to that would have been Paraquat Super, and we also have Scorcher, right? So, that's the Paraquat dichloride option. The Scorcher, we said, was a thicker formulation, better translaminar action, so you can have faster knockdown. So, thank you once again for joining us, and thanks for my guests for passing through, Dr. Kathy Dalit, who's our product development manager, and Omar Forrester, our quality control officer do remember to join the different platforms as we continue to educate our farmers and grow your yields thank you for having me today